Welcome to Washington Street United Methodist Church, located in the heart of Columbia, South Carolina. We are very happy that you are joining us for worship this morning. Whether you are a member or a friend, you are always welcome to be a part of our church family. I'm excited to tell you that on August 6th and 7th, we will have another drop and drive supply drive for Aldersgate Special Needs Ministries. Aldersgate Special Needs Ministries is a part of our South Carolina Annual Conference family in which we support through housing and care developmentally challenged adults throughout South Carolina. We are happy to share in this wonderful ministry and we will have those supply drive needs listed on our website and in various places on Facebook so that you can participate in this drop and drive on August 6th and August 7th. Thank you for supporting us, not only with this effort, but in all the ways in which you are contributing to the life of our church. We so much appreciate your donations to the soup cellar, to our operating fund, and to all the ways in which we support ministry throughout our annual conference. You can learn more about our ministries and all the ways that you can connect with us through wsmethodist.org. And there you will find that we have Sunday school for all ages. We have activities that are going on. And we're also continuing to have our routine meetings, finance, missions, all of the things that keep us going. And so we invite you to join in and be a part of our church family. If you are worshiping with us and you've set up an altar at home, I invite you now to light the candle as we prepare our hearts for worship. Let us pray together. Holy God, we believe that you are gathering us this day to worship you and to listen for what you would say to us. Enable us to hear you clearly so that our faith might be renewed and we might be made ready to boldly declare our hope in Jesus Christ, in whom and through whom we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from Romans 8, verses 26 through 39. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought to, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good, for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not withhold his own son, 
but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also be with us in everything else? Who will bring anything against charges against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised and who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep being slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.
So I don't normally begin my sermon by wearing a mask. But then before COVID-19, wearing a mask was always something I associated with fun, like costume parties at Halloween or Mardi Gras. In seminary, those were the best parties ever. In fact, I danced my first dance with my husband at a Mardi Gras party. When I was wearing a poodle skirt, saddle oxfords and ankle socks, and had attached a huge bow in my short curly hair. But these days, what used to be fun has become one of those things that now separate us from one another. When we're wearing a mask, people can't really see our faces. Our voices are garbled. Sometimes wearing a mask might frighten young children. And certainly when I go into a business and no one is wearing a mask, I become frightened. Masks, social distancing, no in-person gatherings. We're all growing weary of being separated from one another. Yet separation, grief, and loss are part of the human condition. David M. Greenhall wrote, to be human is to have loss and grief. No one is able to escape loss and grief. Anyone who has ever loved anyone or anything will suffer the grief of loss and will know the powerful, painful power of separation. Yet Paul boldly writes that nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. His list includes death itself and life. That's a pretty expansive and all-encompassing thought, isn't it? He includes angels and demons, forces for good and for evil, things that are happening right now and things that may yet happen, things that we can think about and name, and things that come to us like nightmares from our sleep that we cannot enunciate in the light of day. He says that nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of Christ Jesus our Lord. And yet, we know that what we feel, what we feel deep in our hearts, deep in our bones when we are undergoing hardship or trouble, what we feel when death draws near, when we experience the deep hungering of the soul as well as the body when we are struggling with fear of the unknown. I complain a lot about missing church, but I know that there are people who are missing paychecks. Our children and our youth don't know what this school year will bring, and their parents are in a quandary about their children's educational needs. If they are attending school virtually, who will remain at home and work from home and provide supervision and guidance for the children? We all want exactly what is best for our children and for our youth, but we all need to be sure we feed them and clothe them and have the resources to put a roof over their head with the mortgage or the rent. The challenge that Paul faced is the same challenge that we face today. Anxiety is real. Uncertainty is real. Separation is real. 
grief and loss are real. In Paul's time, many people believed that if you were suffering, if you were ill, if you were experiencing any kind of hardship, or if there was any trouble in your family, that you were being punished, that somehow you had offended God and that God was permitting bad things to happen to you because you deserved it. My old Tomcat used to have a pose that signified his displeasure with his human family. He would walk to the foyer, which was just off our den, and he would turn his back to us, sit erectly, and stare into the future as if to say, I am separating myself from you, and you will have no more of my attention. Many people in Paul's hearing believed, really believed, that God did the same thing, that God turned God's back towards them in judgment and in condemnation, that God was, in fact, punishing them Sometimes, even today, when we Christians encounter hardship, when we face the anxiety and the uncertainty of our times, when we struggle at the intersections of our lives, we feel as if God is testing us. We don't want to admit it. But somewhere deep inside, we kind of wonder if God is giving us a cold shoulder. If God is punishing us. Or if God is simply abandoning us to the outcomes of our own choices. In those moments, the greatest risk for Christian believers is not that God will withdraw or forsake us, but that we will withdraw from God. That we will succumb to the false teaching and to this horrendous lie that the God who created us and redeemed us would do us harm. Yes, suffering, Fear, anxiety, grief, and loss are real, but they are not the handiwork of the divine. I had the painful ministry of conducting an internment service for a 14-year-old boy. He was living away from his mother. I think it was in Maryland. He had worked hard mowing the lawns for his neighbors. He had saved his birthday money and his Christmas money, and he bought him a brand new pair of designer sneakers. The first day he wore them to school, he was the proudest young man you could imagine. His father said he wore those shoes to school that day, and he came home, and he wiped them off with a damp cloth, and he sat them over, over to the side, ready for school the next day. He was so proud. The next day, he went to school, went after school to the skateboard park with his friends, and came home so that he could be at home when his father returned from work. When the doorbell rang, he looked out and saw one of his friends, and he opened the door, and he was greeted with a knife. When the police arrested his friend, he told them, I really wanted those shoes. That was when I came to understand all the forces and faces of evil differently. I went back to the creation story, to that first 
chapter in Genesis where it talks about how God spoke. And in the speaking, all things came into existence. That God ordered the darkness, the void, and the chaos with God's Word. And then I read that eighth chapter of Romans. Just before this reading, Paul talks about how the whole creation is groaning under the strain of waiting for God's redemption. You see, Paul understands that God has always had a plan to redeem the whole of creation. And as he wrote, he was helping us to see that evil and suffering and those experiences of fear and anxiety, all of those things that are so very, very real to us are part of that chaos, that part of creation that has not yet come under the redemptive influence of God. That redemption for which we hope and for which we long for. What we call the reign of God. Paul wrote in 825, if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Patience. We, all of us, the whole of creation, are in this strange time of waiting for what God has promised. It means that we are living with the realities of separation. We are living with the realities of fear and loss and suffering and grief and evil. Paul instructed the Romans and he instructs us that in the midst of this time of waiting, we need to throw away all those false ideologies that suggest that God is punishing us or punishing the world. Paul teaches us with confidence that God is for us. God is with us. God is working in us and through us. Paul outlines in this reading we've shared today that when Jesus died on the cross, the world witnessed God giving God's very being for us. And then he asked, why would the God who went so far to make it right for us turn on us? Why would the God who wanted to make it right judge us or condemn us? In Christ, we are separate no more. We are one with Christ, and through Him we are one with God. Paul wrote that in fact, God is working for us. That even now, while we are living in this time of waiting, the risen Christ is interceding on our behalf. And that even now, in those moments when we feel the absolute weakest, when we are so distressed that we do not know what to pray, that the Holy Spirit is working in us and lifting up our prayers to God. Paul reminds us that the three persons of the Godhead are one, in loving us and sustaining us. There is never a time 
never a time when God separates God's self from us. In fact, in Christ, God declared, we are separate no more. Therefore, Paul can boldly declare, I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God is with us. God is for us. Nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. To God be honor and glory and praise. Amen and amen. Please join me in the affirmation of faith as printed in your order of worship from Romans. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Friends, we are on a journey of becoming, and sometimes we struggle with knowing just how to pray. Yet the Spirit helps us in our weakness and intercedes with sighs too deep for words. Therefore, let us offer our prayers, confident that the Spirit prays in us according to God's will. Let us pray. Holy God, you have blessed humanity with understanding and the ability to choose the good. Give to all leaders and people a vision of your world made whole, the wisdom to pursue it, and the will to accomplish it. You have given your world the gift of Jesus to bring us healing and hope. Be with all who suffer hardship, distress, or need, and help us to honor you by serving together as we grow in the mercy and compassion of Christ. You blessed us with the gift of creation, and you call us to uphold its purpose of declaring your holy splendor. Join us now with the Spirit's movement and caring for your world as together we await our redemption. We give thanks for the gift of hope that never ends and that we are more than victors through him who loved us. We remember the great communion of saints and give thanks that nothing can separate us from you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, hear us now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. today, how far apart we are really doesn't matter because we're one in Christ Jesus. As we go from this time of worship, I want you to go with the confidence and the faith to believe that God is for us, that right now, whatever your needs, Christ and the Holy Spirit are interceding on your behalf. With this knowledge, we can go into the world and live boldly for Jesus the Christ, in whose name I send you forth in peace. Amen.